Hello, my name is Frank Christensen and I'm the coordinator of officials for IFF in Europe. This is the third of six training tapes dealing with false start. Today we're specifically looking at false start on the, on the offensive line, so the interior line. Uh, and we're looking at how much is too much and what does it look like when these big guys typically uh, false start. We'll look at the mechanics of, of how to catch it and the philosophy behind you know, who should call it and how should it be called. But before we get to the game film, let's have a look at the rulebook and the mofo to see what they have to say on this topic. In the rulebook, we go to rule 712 dealing with false start. Each of the following is a false start by team A if it occurs prior to the snap after the ball is ready for play and all players are in scrimmage formation. 1. Any movement by one or more players that simulates the start of a play. 2. The snapper moving to another position. And 3. A restricted lineman, according to rule 227.4, moving his hand or making any quick movement. As for the exceptions, 1. A. It is not a false start if a team A lineman immediately reacts when threatened by a team B player in the neutral zone. B. It is not a false start if the snapper takes his hand off the ball provided this does not simulate the start of a play. And then 4. It is also a false start when an offensive player makes a quick jerky movement before the snap included but not limited to a alignment moving his foot shoulder arm body or neck in a quick jerky motion in any direction b the snapper shifting or moving the ball moving his thumb or fingers flexing his elbows jerking his head or dipping his shoulders or buttocks c the quarterback making any quick jerky movement that simulates the beginning of a play and D, a back simulating receiving the ball by making any quick jerky movement that simulates the beginning of the play. And finally, five, the offensive team never coming to a one second stop prior to the snap after the ball is ready for play. This is an illegal shift that converts to a false start. In the MOFO, we go to section three, two definitions. Examples of conspicuous, conspicuous fouls that should be called, even though they might otherwise be disregarded as not serious, include F, false start by a back, tight end, or receiver. In section 3.3, non-contact fouls, false start says, movement by an offensive player is not a false start unless either, one, he moves one or both feet, two, it is sudden, or three, it causes a defensive player to move in reaction. If a running back misses the snap count, makes a sudden movement, and then stops abruptly, it is a false start. If he was generally going into motion, he wouldn't stop. And finally, uh, if in doubt as to whether movement was prior to the snap or not, it was not. Don't be picky on this. Now, let's have a look at some game film. In this first clip we're looking at the guard closest to the camera and it's not a it's not a violent move, it's not a big flinch or anything, but but just leaning back like this is a, uh, a simulating uh, the, the start of the play and this is a, a false start that we need to call and this uh, ideally should be called by either the umpire since uh, he's focused on the on the, on the guards and the center or the line of scrimmage uh, official the line judge here at the bottom of the screen either one of those or both of these officials could and, and should call this on this play we're looking at the tackle closest to the camera and while the last one was more of a lean, this is a, this is a typical flinch uh, where he needs to get into to pass protection, which is why he's flinching backwards. But this certainly is big enough that, that we need to call this. We need to shut this down very quickly and correctly called by the wing here at the bottom. 
and I like the fact that you know when when there's only one flag uh, which is typical on on a on a tackle like this uh, the wing can go straight into a prelim, prelim and and just uh, relay the number and we can move on with the announcement and the next play On this play, we're looking at the guard closest to the camera, and, and we certainly could also talk about the legality of this formation, uh, but for, for the purposes of, of this training tape, we're just talking about this guard and the way that, that you know he wants, to, he wants to pull and he just gets out a little early, starts leaning back there. And again, it's not a, this is not a flinch or an abrupt movement, but it is something that, that we need to call, and it's correctly called by this umpire should also be called by the line judge here at the bottom of the screen. So this one is uh, is an interesting situation. We're looking at the guard away from the camera, and uh, he's going to do a little a little butt flinch there. Uh, and uh, you know, typically when it's a guard, we want the the umpire and the wing on that side to be. Uh, be looking at it. This move would be very difficult to see for the wing since uh, the, the butt there is covered up by the tackle and from the point of view of the umpire um, you know he's looking from the front there and, th and that would also be uh, very difficult for him to move. Now this is a flinch that we need to call so this is big enough for a call but this is one of those unusual situations where we we can uh, get help from the referee or center judge. Now we wouldn't want them to be focused on the line of scrimmage to the degree where they would miss flinches by the quarterback or the running back uh, but that being said you know, this is one of those situations where they certainly could, if their focus is, is drawn to that flinch, to that move, where they could be um, asked to, to help out with a play like this or a call like this simply because it would be so difficult for, for the primary officials to see it. On this play, we're looking at the closest guard or the guard closest to the camera. And this is a good uh, example of, of a situation where it's really, really important to, to have sound uh, pre-snap routine with your whistle. Uh, so here the guard moves just a fraction of a second before the snap, uh, but this is enough for a false start. But it's also a situation where the, the ball is snapped and we have action in, in the box that we want to shut down. So if we have to start looking for our whistles and, and, and picking it out, um, the action is allowed to continue for way too long. Uh, on the other hand, if we're quick on the whistle, uh, you notice here the ref or the uh, umpire has his whistle in his mouth so that he's ready to blow it, blow and throw and do that very quickly. He does that uh, very well here. Then we can shut it down uh, as quickly as we possibly can and avoid uh, too much uh, stuff going on in the middle. So again, uh, correctly called for uh, a false start, uh, correct by the umpire, should also be uh, called by this uh, line judge here at the bottom of the screen, but well done to shut this down very, very quickly, as quickly as we can. This next one is on the tackle closest to the camera here, and he does this little flinch right there, which is certainly enough for a false start, and correctly called by this line judge at the bottom of the screen. It does a good job of, of, of shutting everything down. Now it's also called by the center judge. And you know if, if you're back there as a center judge or a referee and, and, and this happens in your field of vision, uh, you know it's not wrong to call it. Just make sure that, that your focus is not so much on the line of scrimmage that you end up uh, missing stuff that happens in the backfield where your primary responsibility is uh, with the quarterback and, and the running back. Also, uh, now that we have two flags, we have to have this mandatory uh, conversation between the two officials just to make sure that, that, that both officials have the same foul 
which you know we we run the risk of this uh, uh, taking a little longer uh, and and hurting game flow and and the speed of our uh, penalty enforcement. On this last play, we have a, a somewhat unusual situation with the guard closest to the camera. It's not really an abrupt movement or anything like that, but he he turns around, he he picks up himself a little bit, and he's nowhere near close to the snap of the ball and and uh, I mean you could argue that this is not uh, simulating the start of the play but he is nowhere near uh, and and we would just have a have a have a terrible situation let's say we let this go because it, it doesn't you know fit the, the the typical standard false start and then the offense uh, scores a touchdown and now we have to explain to the defensive coach why uh, this wasn't shut down it's just so much easier for us and for game management to shut this down as a full start and, and so we don't have a play we just have a five yard penalty and everybody could see well 78 wasn't ready and he was moving around uh, so we go with a five yard penalty and move on with life and that just to me is, is a much better uh, solution uh, again, this uh, this could or, or should be called by the, uh, the by the wing here at the bottom, and the umpire who should be able to to see this movement and see this just looks uh, uh, weird and, and and messy is a good way to to describe it. And that was the uh, the training tape for for false starts on the on the O line. Uh, I hope it made sense, and I hope you found something you can use on the field. <laughs>